everybody, I'm Dave Thomas and this time I am building the Estes Athena model rocket. Now I can hear my viewers commenting already that this says it comes fully assembled. Why are you making a video of it? Well the truth is it comes almost fully assembled and if this is your first model rocket then you need to be aware of a few things to check um, as well. So we'll just go ahead and pull this out of the box. All right, and as you can see, it is at least mostly built here. Now there's a great big piece of tape there, and you want to carefully cut that without cutting any of the rocket pieces inside. And there is one piece that needs assembled here, and that's the parachute. All right. And it does come with some instructions here. Okay, but a few things to check before you even put the parachute on is first of all, check the shock cord here. And this has a problem in that it's too long on the free end here and what can happen is when we go to put the nose cone onto the end of the body tube here this can get caught up in between the shoulder of the nose cone and the body tube and what can happen there is when the rocket goes to eject the parachute this can get stuck and the rocket will come down like a dart instead of on its parachute so the first thing I would do here is cut this back about six millimeters or about a quarter of an inch. We don't want it all the way back at the knot. Okay, and then go ahead and tug on that in different directions to make sure it's good and tight. And then I recommend putting just a little drop either of wood glue or white glue onto that knot to help make sure that it won't come loose. Okay, doesn't take much, just a little dab there. And I'm just going to work that into the knot. Okay, you do need to use white or wood glue for that, not any type of super glue or plastic cement, which can melt the rubber. All right, the other thing to check is inside. Okay, now in this case, the shock cord is mounted to the body tube underneath the launch lug here. Now they use an excess of glue on this launch lug, but there's not a whole lot that you can do about it there. All right. Now we also have this little bit. I don't know if I can get that sticker off. All right. No, it's just the uh, specifications and everything. Mine's got a little bubble in it here and some glue underneath there, and there's just not much you can do about that. There's a little strand of glue there that I can kind of pull off. Uh, the problem is if I pull up on these stickers, it'll tear the body tube and make it look even worse. All right, But what you can do here also is go ahead and squish down any air bubbles okay, on the decals here. All right, Check your fins. Um, now since this came in a good sized box, there shouldn't be any damage here, but sometimes in shipping a fin might get bent out of shape. And if that's the case, just gently put some pressure on that um, to bend it back. Don't, use it, don't exert a lot of pressure that could cause a kink in it. All right? Just be gentle and give it some pressure over time. In this case, it's fine. All right? um, also check your engine clip. All right, now this engine clip is supposed to be in that little gap there. Mine is actually over a little bit. And so sometimes you can just bend that over like that. So now it moves freely in there, and that's what we want. All right, and then we do need to add the parachute. So go ahead and carefully open this up. And then spread it out.
and then gather up the shroud line. So there's going to be one that stretches all the way across in the middle and then two others here, one on each side. And I'm just going to hook all of those over one finger like this. And then I'm going to, with my other hand, grab the middle of the parachute there and pull everything taut. All right. And all of these corners of the parachute should get pretty close to meeting each other there. Um, and if they don't, you can simply adjust the shroud lines as they go around your finger here until you get that as even as you can. All right. And you're going to hold on to these loops. And I'm going to show you two ways that you can mount this. Um, the one is what they show in the instructions. So you take your loops and pass them through. Oop. Pass them through the eyelet, but not down into the nose cone. Okay, like that, and then regain them. Now the problem with this method is you end up letting go of the loops completely and you lose the adjustment that you just made to it. Okay, but now you take this all the way down so you have a big loop here. Put the parachute through that and then you're going to pull that taut and that will form a knot around the eyelet there. Okay, now I'm not going to pull mine all the way down because I'm going to use a different method. So I'm going to take this back off. Alright, uh, and what I prefer to do is mount this with a snap swivel that you would get from the fishing department of a sporting goods store, hardware store, department store. Alright, so something that looks like this. Um, they also come in brass coloration. This has a snap on one end that allows you to take it on and put it off, and then a, a loop on the other. And so take your shroud line loop now and put all three of those loops through the loop end on the swivel. Okay. Now as I'm doing this, you can see that I'm always holding on to the shroud so they're not changing length on me. All right. Move that so you've got enough loop here and then you're going to move the entire snap swivel through the loop. All right. And then pull that tight and it's going to form a nice little knot right there. All right, you can recheck, make sure your corners are still all together, and mine are pretty close. Okay, so once you have that where you want it, then go ahead and put a little teeny dab of wood glue or white glue on those shroud line knots right there so they don't come undone. All right, and now you open up the snap part of the snap swivel, put this onto your nose cone eyelet and close it. Now the overall size of the snap swivel doesn't make a lot of difference. Even the smallest one is more than robust enough to handle the weight of this rocket. What is more important is the size of the snap itself so that when it's in place it should be able to freely move around that eyelet. If it sticks on one side or in the middle where it can't move across there then you need one that's a little bit bigger. Okay. Once you've checked everything then and make sure it's all in place, then we'll take our parachute shroud lines and grab them about in the middle. Put those up onto the parachute that's already folded into a triangle and then fold the sides around it, making this long spike. Fold the spike in half and then over itself this way so that we've got a, a nice long cylinder there. All right. The shock cord goes inside. Now if you're actually preparing this for launch, you want to put about three pieces of recovery wadding in before this so it protects the parachute. All right. but I'm just storing this, so I'm going to put my parachute down in there and then the nose cone on top of that. And that should slide fairly easily. If it's jamming, that usually means you've either got the shock cord or some shroud lines in between the shoulder and the body tube there. Once the nose cone is properly in place, then go ahead and give it a shake like this. 
And if it comes out, then we need to add a little bit of masking tape to the shoulder here. Mine seems to be doing pretty well. So what you want is something that won't shake itself out really easily, but also is loose enough that you can pull this out with just a little bit of tension on it. Okay, and now this one truly is ready to fly. Have a great launch, a safe recovery, and please stay tuned for more of my videos.